Yes, everybody. Welcome back to TarHeelIllustrated.com. Or, of course, if you are watching on our rapidly growing YouTube channel on the race for 10K right now, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me from Brooklyn, New York, in the Barclays Center, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ just saw the Tar Heels pick up the 63 to 43 win over number six seed Virginia in the ACC tournament quarterfinals. Advance into place set a play, excuse me, seven seed Virginia Tech at 9 30 p.m. tomorrow night. AJ, I want to blast the sponsor real quick before we dive into this one. NIL Fanbox sponsoring our podcast here. Really excited to be partnering with them on this one. Remember, for as little as $9.95 a month, you can receive authentic autograph memorabilia from your favorite UNC women's and men's basketball players. You're not going to go on too much right now, but if you guys want to learn more, want to get a 10% discount when you sign up, use that promo code HEELS. 22 to save i'll put the link to where you can get on the pre-order list below in the description but aj let's dive right into this one as we always do big win for carolina really a game i thought they were in control the whole time we have to start with brady manic a uh, big time brady is what i'm going to call this one 21 points on the night seven rebounds three assists 19 in the first half more than uva even had at halftime uva had only 13 points at the half so really really big time night from brady manic and that first half was an offensive clinic is, I think, is, is what I called it on Twitter. <laughs> you know, when you have a guy who's 6'9", with long arms, who has as quick a release as Brady does, that's the perfect tonic against Virginia's pack line defense mm-hmm. because UVA made a concerted effort early. They're going to double on Armando with a third set of eyeballs not too far off because they were well, – Armando went 29 and 22 against them in, in January. They weren't going to let that happen again. So when you double down, what does that mean, Jacob? It means that somebody else is going to be open. And, you know, it took them a while before they started going out and covering Brady because a bunch of those threes he attempted there for a while – were wide open. And then they went out and started guarding him a little bit and he was driving. And I think the most beautiful drive he had, he had, he had tonight. And I think he's had since he arrived at UNC was that baseline left baseline drive yep. right at the end of the first half. That was Brady Maddox way of telling Virginia, there's not a damn thing you could do to stop <laughs> me tonight. And, and it doesn't happen very often against Virginia, but guess what? In two games against UVA this year, the Tar Heels have not only annihilated mm-hmm. them, but they've had two different guys tell Virginia. You can't stop me. Mm-hmm. You can't stop me. Mm-hmm. The one was Armando tonight. It was Brady. It was a sensational performance. He moves so well without the ball. He makes himself open. It's a lost art sometimes in basketball. It's not something that a lot of us talk about all the time because it's not sexy, right? But I, you know, sitting close to here at the ACC tournament, I'm right on the floor. So I, I get to see the movement up close. I get to see guys rub off screens. But Brady doesn't have to rub off a lot of screens. He's just constantly moving. He sees where the pockets are. He knows how to find open spaces. He makes himself available. He's an easy target to see. He's the only guy out there, 6'9", with all that hair and a big old yeah, beard. So, so RJ knows where he is. Caleb knows where he is. Is. Leaky knows where he is. Armando knows where he is. They found him tonight, and he was sensational. 19 points in the first half. Virginia had 13. And what's interesting is Brady actually passed UVA by about five and a half minutes or so left in the first half, or yeah, about that, when he actually at that point had more points. Now, for a while, he would score and he was even with them. And then someone else from Carolina would score, UVA would score, whatever. But at about five and a half minutes left in the first half is when Brady passed them by. And Virginia didn't pass him by until about four minutes in the second half when the Wahoos in a bucket to make it 41 to 20. Up to that point, throughout the first 24 minutes or so of the game. At that point, Brady was leading UVA. You need a guy to do that if you're going to beat that defense. And you need a guy to do that if you're going to jumpstart yourself in the postseason, especially coming off the kind of win they had the other day. Brady gave them everything they needed and then some tonight. And by the way, um, we're going to have I have a story I'm going to write about him as well. He's got some great quotes about that. And he said, he, yeah, he kind of knew that he was outscoring them for quite a while. <laughs> and he said, yeah, that's he, he was asked, did you know that you were outscoring him? And he kind of tried to play it off. He said, yeah, that seems about right. Yeah, I love that quote. That was fantastic. The, the confidence oozing from him in this team right now is off the charts. Yeah, he's big time. He's he, Him in particular has been big time over the last month or so for the Tar Heels. Having a really good season overall, but he's been big time yeah. um, kind of here down the stretch. Well, oh, some more stats real quick before we run to the second thing. Caleb Love, 10 points, three boards, five assists. Amando Baycott, another double-double, 10 points, 11 boards. Set a UNC single-season record with 24 double-doubles this year, passing Bryce Johnson. R.J. Davis, overall, good game from him as well. Didn't 
you know, Phillips stat sheet points wise, just eight points, but eight rebounds, six assists for RJ. All right, AJ, let's talk about the defensive side of the ball for the Tar Heels. But they played really well. You know, typically when we're doing these, you know, analyzing these games, it seems like in the past after playing Virginia, we're talking about how good of a defensive job Virginia's done on Carolina was the opposite tonight for you. the first time it seems like in a while. UVA shot just 34.6% from the floor, had 11 turnovers, shot just 18.5% in the first half alone. And like you said, only 13 first half points. So, AJ, this was a, a Virginia team that, you know, has is, is been up and down for a majority of this year. And I think – in a lot of ways, you saw the worst of, of the, this Virginia team and what they've shown this season tonight because didn't play great defensively, I didn't think, and in particular on them on offense. And credit to how Carolina played defensively, shutting them down, didn't look very good on offense as well. Um, you know, But overall, you got to give major, major credit for the Tar Heels for whatever the, how they were able to stop UVA in this one. You know, there was debate at halftime among some in the media. Is Carolina playing well offensively or is Virginia just horrific? Yeah, I, had, I think I was, it's I, I, had that battle in my head, yeah. I think it's a combination of both, to be fair, but I think Carolina had a lot to do with the horrific play. I think Virginia was stunned that Carolina got in their grill. I think that Kia Clark was stunned that Leaky Black is on him. I think that threw everything off. And in the first half, Kia Clark, Reese Beekman, and Armand Franklin were combined one for 14. Boom. That's the game. Yeah, it's right game. there. It's game over, for yeah. everything we said about Brady. That combined with what they did offensively against those guys, that's the game. They were missing shots badly. Uh, they were there were a couple of times when I think maybe three or four times UVA got what I would consider a normal UVA shot. A couple mm-hmm. of jumpers by Gardner in the lane. That's his specialty. He's very good at that. He got a couple of those. Uh, uh, Shadrick had a putback slam when he wasn't boxed out in a situation, mm-hmm. but they weren't getting buckets out of their offense. They were they got a bucket, I think, in a fast break. They got a fast break layup. So they weren't getting anything out of the traditional offense because Carolina just said, no, you're not going to. They contested almost everything. Uh, there were multiple bodies in there. I thought Armando, you know, UVA's hip, uh, bigs aren't super efficient offensively, yeah. but, you know, Shedrick at times has been pretty good. He had 16 in the win at Duke, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Armando's hips defensively, the way he bodied, the way he used the middle of his body down the block was fantastic because he didn't allow the bigs to create anything. They sometimes pass pretty well out of that spot, but they were unable to, and there was nothing there. The drives weren't there. There was just nothing there. Mm-hmm. Carolina was fantastic defensively. In the second half, UVA hit some more shots. I think Carolina pulled back a little bit, but, and I'll tell you another thing, sometimes when the subs have come in, there's been a drop off on defense and Hubert talked about that a couple of weeks ago, but Justin McCoy and Puff Johnson came and there was no yeah, drop shot. off on defense at all. Mm-hmm. No drop off on defense. Justin McCoy hit his first bucket, by the way, since January 24th Hit another one later on. This was a confidence game for him. Mm-hmm. Confidence is not an issue for Puff. So they were able to get a couple of minutes from the bench, but defensively, this was a terrific performance being so close to the action, which is not typical. A lot of the places we go these days, I was able to hear the communication. You could hear Armando barking at everything. So if I can hear it on press row, you know, the other four guys in the court can hear it too. Communication, effort, principles, and just being locked down, man. That's what they were tonight. And for as bad as UVA was, I think Carolina had a lot more to do with that than the simple fact that UVA woke up today and was just going to be bad on offensively. I think Carolina deserves the majority of the credit for that. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. I thought it was just a a really good overall performance on both sides of the ball for Carolina tonight. Uh, AJ, let's last thing I want to talk about looking back to that Duke game a little bit, some of the things we talked about in our preview podcast going into this one was how was Carolina going to handle coming off that win over Duke emotional win. I know they had a few days in between with this one. It wasn't a super quick turnaround in that respect, but how are they going to handle it going up against a team that in a lot of ways, when you watch them on film is about the exact opposite of who you can play in Duke about a week ago. And Carolina handled it really, really well. I thought obviously based on the scoreline and how, you know, this was basically not a game, you know, early on in the first half in hindsight, Carolina put this one to bed early, but overall, that's a big positive for this team. And AJ, I want to ask you this. Do you think that is this Carolina team past that? Because we've talked a lot in the past this season about Carolina not handling prosperity. Well, when they win a couple of games, they don't lay an egg and, you know, go back to that inconsistent play. Hasn't really been the case um, in recent weeks with Carolina winning 12 of the last 14. Do you, so do you think this is a Carolina team that based on what we've seen in the, over the past month or so in particular could be past that? Yes. They're past it. In fact, they've won 12 out of 14. Those two losses, Duke punched them right out of the gate. Armando picked up two fouls. Their lunch pail guy went to the sideline. They looked around. There were no lunch pails, and they got rolled, right? That happens sometimes. Pitt 
they weren't ready. They didn't, they didn't respect Pitt. They kind of still were in that mode where they thought the front of their jersey would actually affect the play on the court, and it didn't. I think that was their final straw learning lesson. I think without the Pitt performance, it's very possible we wouldn't have gotten what we did from them, uh, what we saw from them on Saturday night. Maybe we wouldn't have seen what we saw from them tonight as well. I think that that was a very, very valuable lesson that they made the most of. And the fact that they totally cut the court, there was some concern. And there was a lot of chatter in the press room before the game today. And I'm talking like at 5 o'clock clock four and a half hours before the game boy they celebrated a long time the other night hubert let them drive the bus down franklin street and you could see even there was one clip of brandon robinson who was on the team a couple of years ago he was on the national championship team in 17 he's kind of stepping out the bus and hubert's there and they're kind of celebrating it kind of remember me this reminded me of the celebrations in the movie Slapshot, the original <laughs> movie Slapshot, where they were just soaking it all in right and and Human nature is you kind of let down your guard. A club that thought it had arrived five or six times during the season, only to learn that it hadn't, you're like, wow, you know, this could be a bad thing. And there were a lot of people that thought, boy, they they may not be ready to play tonight. And this is the last team you want to play coming yeah. off a game like that, one that's going to strangle you, right? Mm. Not an issue. I think they've grown past that. And Hubert's grown past that. For the people that were highly critical of him earlier in the year, I kept saying they play the tournament in March, not in December, not in January, not in February, because you must accumulate to learn. You kind of gather as you go along during the course of the year. And this club's gather a lot of stuff. And, and so much of it is about learning about yourself and remember a couple of the three things we did jacob and we did them in like december january and february i said look they're gaining a lot of information a lot of real life examples okay here's what happens when you don't have it here's what happens when you have that thought process as opposed to here's what happens when you do have it here's what happens when you do have the right thought process so they have a ton of examples in their rearview mirror of both i think this club has decided to embrace the good stuff and they took the good stuff. The good stuff got them through some tough games in February. And the good stuff took uh, went with them to Durham. And remember I said their night, are they going to bring that to Brooklyn? Is they, they going to drag that wagon out onto the court with them with all those things they've compiled and accumulated over the last six weeks? They were there. It's out there on the court. There's debris of it on the court right now. They were fantastic in their mindset. They weren't fantastic in their execution, but they were fantastic in their mindset tonight. And that's the number one thing. Because if the mind ain't there, the body ain't going to be there, yeah. but the mind was there and the body was there plenty on defense. And we've said before, they have eruption ability, a guy that can go off and carry them for a while. They had that tonight. That's who this team is when they're playing really well. That's who this team needs to be to, to march through the postseason. Tomorrow night against Virginia Tech, it might be somebody else instead of Brady. It might be R.J. Davis. It might be Caleb Love. Maybe Armando dominates in the post. But they have guys that could do different things that can explode. They're not a one-trick pony unit. There's a lot of options there. There's a lot of tricks, a lot of ponies, right? And uh, I think tonight we saw that one. We might see something different tomorrow night. But the key is if they have – the, the mindset, if they have the disposition when they take the court and they bring that wagon with all that junk that they've accumulated this year, they're going to be in good position to win any game they play moving forward. Definitely. Good place to wrap this one up, AJ Carolina, getting the 63-41 to 41 win over Virginia, advancing to the semifinal of the ACC tournament tomorrow night, 9.30 p.m. tip against 7C Virginia Tech. We'll obviously be here for that, so make sure you keep it locked to Tar Heel Illustrated dot com for all your post game coverage for your night all the covers leading up to tomorrow's game during it and after as well aj i'm gonna let you go because i know you got plenty of work to do it's already yeah. almost 1 a.m over here 9 30 9 45 tip offs so i should say it could be absolutely brutal sometimes <laughs> should be, should, if i were king i'd wear a big giant crown right it'd be <laughs> orange and black for the orioles and i would outlaw 9 45 100 percent 100 man I'm right there with you. I'll be, I'll be right there beside you on that train. So it is what it is. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll change careers and I'll run for office and I'll make exactly. I'll be king yeah. instead of president. I'll just I'll make myself king. Hey, if you ever if you ever become that, that's the first thing on my checklist is just banning those 9:30 p.m. games. I couldn't agree more with you on that. But AJ, I'll, I'll let you run on this one, man. Again, 63-43 win for the Tar Heels. Make sure you guys check out NIL Fanbox as well. You can sign up to pre-order using that promo code Heels22 to save 10%. Check them out at nilfanbox.com forward slash North Carolina. Link to that will be in the description below. You guys know the drill. We're on the race for 10K. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well so you know every single time we upload. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.